everybody's here, I'm going to put the list down to the bottom. Um, sit back in my mucky studio, throw <laughs> my new beard, which Jackie didn't know I had. <laughs> um, and there we go. Right. Okay. Gouache. I'm going to be working with Gouache today as a precursor for going into oils. People used to call gouache the poor man's oil paint, but <clears throat> it's got to the stage now where good gouache is either more expensive or um, nearly as expensive as studio quality oil paint, paint anyway. So, um, did anyone get the picture I sent out this morning? Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah. what I'm going to be starting with. Oh. Um, it won't end up looking like that because that's not the whole point. What um, One of the things I want to show today is how to work from a photograph. A lot of people just copy the photograph slavishly and that's not what it's about. What it's about is using the photograph as a basis for making your own picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just smiling at Alan's family life being intruded upon. It's really good fun. Um, it's uh, I'll never forget John Gielgud once talking about playing King Lear at Stratford, and he was saying that um, you know he arguably the best stage actor in the world, all of a sudden, in a long speech, felt the audience fading away from him. And they just weren't listening to him. And he was really panicking about this. And he looked around the stage. And it was one of those things. They'd had a bunch of amateurs to play bit parts. And this was a big crowd scene in King Lear. And um, there was a little lad, about four, who was very carefully cleaning the wax out of his ear. Um, <laughs> and, he, and there he was, he totally upstaged the best actor in the world. So, <laughs> there you go, that's what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So, um, anyway, I'm going to go and switch to my other camera now and show you what we're doing. Um, and you've got the picture and I will start off. I haven't even put any paint out yet, so there we go. Who's that? Oh, Pauline. Admit Pauline. There we go. Are you there, Pauline? Can you hear me, mother? <laughs> there we go. What a lot of people we've got today. She's got a blank screen. Is that me? Because I... Now, you did have a blank screen, but Pauline's got <coughs> a blank screen at the moment. Never mind. I can't fight with you, um, Barbara. I managed to be able to invite you. No, it was um, Jen, I asked. Is it me? <laughs> Can you see it's me? Pauline! There we go. Anyway, I shall carry on with what I was doing. Uh, right. OK, so I'm working on a proper palette because I'm going to be using them like oil paints as opposed to watercolour. And here's my gouaches. I've got two different lots. I've got these ones, which are French froggy ones, and they're brilliant. Uh, and I've got a big one of white of those because you, like any other thing, you use more white than anything else. So I put a big blob of white out. And I'm going to keep it fairly limited. So I'm going to use lemon yellow. yellow ochre if I can find it. So we've got two yellows. I'm going to use the 
I had to break off the light. But... No. I'll use cadmium red. And I'll use burnt sienna. Um, I don't have light red, or I would have used light red, but burnt sienna is pretty similar. So that's two yellows, two reds, two blues, ultramarine, and cobalt. And I will also use some Payne's Grey. I'll show you all these when they're out. Payne's Grey. And it should be brown. There we go, go on back. War Umber and oh, I should put the burns out. Never mind, I can make it up. Found a green in here before she can put that out. Okay. I'll put that there. Okay, so that's the palette. And I've got Titanium white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, stop running about, you naughty, cadmium red, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. What's that one? Oh, that's the Payne's grey, raw umber, and. That last one is olive green. Sorry, I was just letting Anne in. Hello, Anne, are you there? There's that many people in today, I can't see all of you. Can, right, can you okay. see me, Keith? Who's you? Jen. Who, oh, Jen? Hang yeah. on, let's look for you. There's Anne, there's Derek. <clears throat> I can see the top of your head, Jen. All oh, right, okay. I can see, there you go, that's you. Is that better? That's better, yeah. There we go. There we go, right, okay. So, judge it, starting with me picture. Um, what you've got, if you can see it, We've got clump of trees, we've got a meadow, we've got some near distant trees and we've got some trees in the far background and we've got some bushy things. And this going across the middle, what you can't actually see, is the River Cluedogs. This is early. Um, it's a picture I took years ago um, and I paint it every now and again. Um, I'm trying to sort out, look at this north spread, it's not everywhere. Um, bum, bum, bum. I'll just push it to one side with a brush. If my entire painting turns out red, this is why. <laughs> okay, I am going to use a fairly big brush. Now, when I use it like this, I don't, that's not really a fairly big brush, it's quite a small brush, but never mind. I'm using a bristle brush because I'm trying to do it as much like oils as possible. So all I've done is dampened the brush. I haven't, I'm not mixing water with the paint. I'm just using a damp brush. And there, white paint and into that white paint 
I'm going to mix some of the umber, mixing the umber on the palette with some of the Payne's Grey. Add some ultramarine. And there we've got a sort of cloudy colour. Very dark, it's a bit brown, but doesn't matter. And all I'm going to do is scribble in sky. Because on the picture, there's a great dark cloud going across. Cloud going across. I'm afraid the camera is slightly low. You can't get, that's the very top corner and you can't quite get that. But. You can see I'm not painting anything deliberately, I'm just slapping paint on and I'm leaving brush strokes behind and scribbling them in. This will all change and get, who's that? Oh, Pauline again. She keeps falling out. Whoever's on the ladder next to Pauline, hold on to her. <laughs> Are you there, Paul? Doesn't sound like. Right, okay. Put some blue into that mix. Should be there. Pauline, have you got in? Oh, well. Yeah. Right, so that's a sort of grey, bluey, whitey colour up in that corner because that's where I want some light mm. to be coming from so far. <clears throat> right. Don't know what's the matter. Right, okay. Sky, sky, sky. As it gets further away it gets <clears throat> lighter off it first though. Sorry if I keep getting distracted but Pauline is trying like mad to get in and I keep letting her in but it doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. They're bigger. Uh, added her again. <clears throat> when I admitted you lot, did it just go straight in? Mm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Weird. Mm. 
Right, so. I'm giving a bit of downward direction to these brush strokes here. Just to break it up a little bit. I'll come right down. As I come towards the bottom, I'm going to put a tiny amount of yellow ochre into it. Are you adding water to it, Key? Um, I'm just damping the brush. For this one, I put a little bit more in because I want it thinner. Okay. So rather than just damp, it's almost wet. But really, I'm using it the same way that I'd use oils. Where this, what I like about gouache rather than oils, I love oils, but gouache is more immediate because it dries so much quicker, especially in conditions like this where I've got two big daylight lamps on the paper. Oh, poor Pauline. Has anyone got a phone number, Liz or Jen or anyone? No. Um, no. It's probably like me. It comes through a different way each time. <laughs> Say again. Well, it comes sometimes on my iPad. It's great. But on my laptop, honest to God, I'm so confused with it. It comes through a different way each time. I don't know where I am. No, well, I'm a bit like that. That's why I was asking if any of you have got the things. Mm. Keith, what colours are you using for the sky? I can't get mine to anything like. At the top, at the, that, um, I started off with white. Yeah. Then I mixed some raw umber with some Payne's grey. And for these bits, I'm using white and yellow ochre. If you haven't got yellow ochre, raw. We'll... I haven't got Payne's grey. I've got yellow. No, I haven't got. Um, yes, okay. I've got yellow ochre. Oh, have you got ultramarine? Ultramarine, yellow ochre, yeah. Have you got um, burnt umber or? I've got burnt umber and I've got black. Okay, use your black very sparingly and put a bit of white and a bit of ultramarine into it. And that should get you somewhere near. Ah! Keith, did you want Pauline's number? No, I want someone to text her and say we keep trying to let her in. Okay. Or message her. I'll I'll text her. Man tell her to do it manually rather than through the, um, through the yeah, email. Yeah, she's got an iPad because it says Pauline's iPad. I don't know why she can't get in. She's been in several times before. Mm. And she's obviously getting through because she's getting through to the waiting room, but it just won't let her in. Ah. And what did you say? Do it manually. Yes. Put the uh, put in the meeting ID and then it'll ask for the password and then the password rather than just try and click into the. Yeah, that might work. That might work. Mm. Say so I've never ever had to join a Zoom meeting. Well, no, I did once. But that was ages ago when I was supposed to be learning how to do it. Didn't stick. I'm not very good at learning. I'm better at teaching. <laughs> okay. All I'm doing now is I'm putting in some light bits. I don't know if you can tell from there, but I'm using the paint almost dry and dragging it over the grain of the paper like you would with canvas so that it breaks up a bit. Okay, I'm going to put this big cloud in because that's what I wanted to start with. Damp brush. Keith, is, is a bristle 
airbrush the best to use with this type of paint then? Yeah, when you're doing it this way, <clears throat> it's best to use a, or at least a fairly hard um, nylon brush because I want to show the brush marks and I want it to drag along the along the paper. If I just use some of this grey colour and I drag it along the paper there, yeah. can you see how it breaks up? Yeah, can you? Now, if I used a very soft brush, damp the soft brush, same paint, you see how it fills more in? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's why it's um, it's tools for the job, really. Yeah, that's the sort okay. Of yeah. Thank you. Now, yeah. I'm going to put some blue into that handsome colour. And as you're desperate to get involved, Red, I'll add you. <laughs> Look at him, he's running into the mixes. He really is desperate to join in. Pa Pauline said she's done that many times and she's doing it now. Okay, let's see. If I'll go to the waiting room. Oh. One person is waiting. Pauline's iPad. Admit. I've just admitted her. Yeah. Oh. She got in. Don't see her. Yes. No. <laughs> She's got a red. She's got a video closed. Ah. She needs to join with video. Tell us to turn the video off. Right, anyway, cloud with me, purpley grey. No, it still hasn't come in. Admit, come on in, Pauline, you're not usually this time. Right, where this big dark cloud is. Now this cloud is the paint's grey. If you haven't got it, try mixing some up with black and white and um, a bit of blue and a bit of red. Actually, that's pretty much the colour of the cloud. I'm just putting some darkness into that. And then one of the beauties One of the beauties of gouache is that you don't just have to go light over dark. What you can do, while that big grubby mark is in the middle of the painting, I can get some light colour and scrub it into it and it will mix in. I'm playing a very dangerous game here because I've got my cup of coffee <laughs> where I usually... You're going to dip your brush in it. I'm, twice I've nearly dipped it in. I have actually done that. Oh, I do it regularly. I've done it in workshops at Twig, haven't I, before? <laughs> I keep saying the worst thing I ever did was when I, would, I stood back to take a look at an oil painting and took a swig of... Um, like uh, Pauline <laughs> said she pressed join with the video, saw her face and, and coffee cup, then it chucked her out. Um, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Admit. I think, I think perhaps she'd better turn her iPad off, turn it back on again and start from scratch. Okay. That usually works, doesn't it? Sometimes, yeah. That one. Let's leave it out in the drawers.
see that according to psychiatrists is actually one of the indicators of madness <laughs> if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results oh i thought you meant turning your ipad off <laughs> no, <she said. laughs> no i'm actually using an ipad <laughs> uh it's really strange. I'm going to put some pink into that. Just to warm it up a bit. <laughs> but if I was using watercolour with this, it'd just be a mess. Whereas using gouache, you can lay <laughs> stuff on top and blend it in and use dry brush techniques to break up the edges. Um, yellow ochre, put that into bits around the edge. So can, can you use gouache with oil as well, Keith? Um, I don't know actually. I really can't see that there's much of a problem, mm -hmm. except that it might separate from the oil. Um, it depends on, I know you can't do it with acrylic because <clears throat> the acrylic polymer won't mix with the oil. Um, but I don't know about the, because these are just gum Arabic. I think you'd have to use it under the oil, wouldn't you? You'd have to use? I use it under the oil. I've just then it might pull up. I think possibly something I'll have to go at is using some gouache and using linseed oil or poppy oil instead of water with it, see if it works. Oh, she's done it. Is she there? Well, she said done. <laughs> oh, there we go. Brilliant. See, that's what comes turning your iPod on Mark. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Only took an hour, uh, an hour. Oh, it's ridiculous. Hello, Pauline. And I got up early. I could have had my lying. We're, we're just about to finish off now. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Pauline. Hiya. How are you? <laughs> Liz. Yes, how are you? I'm all right. <laughs> and Jackie's here as well. Hello. <laughs> We're having a sort of reunion. Re there yeah. you go, Alan. If you want someone to talk to, Pauline's your person. You might be able to break her block. I yeah, I need, I need that. Yeah. And also, she never bloody shuts up, so. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Pop kettle. Oh, Pauline, do you remember when we used to get into trouble for nattering when we should be working in? Oh, nothing oh. new there. Yeah. They're all working from home now. I know. It just goes to prove that most people, most companies, things don't actually need to keep paying all the rent and rates they pay. Yeah. I must admit, Steve's been working from home all through and he he's, he's missing the company a lot. Yeah, Rory and um, Casey are both, um, well, Rory's a debt collector. Well, you know what I mean? He works for a, a company doing phone calls about mm -hmm. how they can pay their stuff. Um, yeah, and um, and his missus is, I don't know, she works in um, in stock control or something for a company, and they've been working at home mm. since May. Yeah, well, and Max Steve's been there since March. We're talking to Jobby, I think Linda's working from home now, doing all yeah. those advising stuff. 
Yeah, they've asked them to trial, to do two trials. One trial's doing week and week about, and one's doing part weeks. That's weird. Right, okay, I'm going to leave that for now. I've got a dark chunk of sky and some white bits around it, and I've got some blue coming in up there. Oh, we're talking about blue coming in. Bit of the cobalt. Mix it up with some white. Now that is quite runny because I just want it down here to get a hint of blue into the base of the sky. And that's quite ruddy, but I'm just blending it in. You won't be able to see the bottom line of that. Don't breathe there. Don't know if anybody else is having the same problem, but mine is drying as soon as I've stopped touching. Mm. Right, it doesn't matter about that. I'm just taking notes because I can't find my gouache. Oh dear. I know where you put it. <laughs> in the range. Or in <laughs> Yeah. I did have some. I used it ages ago. I put it somewhere. I'm having a studio built at the moment. So all my art supplies is just all over the place waiting to go into the studio. Oh, how are you getting on with your hakes? Oh, brilliant. They arrived oh, two days ago. Brilliant. Oh, oh, that's good. And you're not having any problem getting used to them? Well, I haven't used them that much yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Now we're going on to the next bit, which is... What I'm using is this cloudy colour, and I'm putting in some more of the brown and some of the cobalt blue. People say you shouldn't ever use cobalt and ultramarine together but I think, it, I don't know why they get that idea but I often do. My usual palette is two yellows, two reds, two blues and then some earth colours. And the two blues I almost always use are cobalt and ultramarine. I've been doing that since I was 13, which is quite some time ago. Oh, wow. Nearly 20 years, good grief. Right, so I am <laughs> doing these grey colours. And can you see how it's picking up slightly the underneath paint, which is still damp, which is why I'm doing it now, because I want a soft edge to blend in. Another way of getting a soft edge is to use a different brush and just yeah. feather it round the edges. That's clever. So that's softening the edges of those trees. Tiny touch of this green I'm putting into there. But I don't want it to be too green. So I'm killing it with a little bit of yellow ochre. And a tiny touch of the light red or raw sienna. If you put the opposing colour on a colour wheel in with a colour you will dim it down you'll take the brightness out of it so if you've got a yellow that looks incredibly bright put a tiny tab of purple in it and it will stop singing immediately Right now, at the bottom of these trees, I'm going to put some dark. So I'll put the ultramarine into that, touch of the light red into it. 
And we've got purpley colour there. Which I'll lodge at the bottom of these trees. Oh, sorry, that's feedback from my hearing aid on the camera, on the microphone in the camera. You know something? I think I'm going to do this as a snow scene because I quite like all the white at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's amazing being God, isn't it? You can change the seasons as you want. Do anything you like, move trees about, build houses, shove people where they don't want to be. It's great. Right, now there, I'm going to put these sort of um, further away trees there. Because I'm going to do it wintry, I'm going to mix some of the cobalt, some of the grey, or black. If, I, if you're using black instead of Payne's grey, just actually just add a little bit of white to it and it'll come out grey. When I say a little bit, I mean just a touch. Right, there we go. I've got a bluey grey colour there and here I'm going to put some taller trees but further away now loads of really careful wood in here you see how using the paint dry just gives it that hazy look And Alan, this is something you can do uh, with oil. It, the problem with oil is, um, is you've got to wait for it to dry or be very, very gentle. But using dry brush, it's actually called scumbling because you're dragging paint over the under, underlying surface. And you're using the weave of the canvas, or in this case, the pattern of the paper, just to give an impression. To give a, a bit of texture to it. Right, so there's them, and I'll put a bit of a bush here. Just so I'll know where it is. Now, over there, the far end of the field, a bit more of the cobalt into there, a bit more of the white, and there you've got that pale blue touch of the grey. Now, that's pretty much the same colour, so a bit more white to it. And now, I'll do the trees over there. Now, they're not really trees, they're blobs, but the human brain is a really weird thing because it tells us they're trees because the rest of it looks like a field. Oh, hopefully the rest of it looks like a few. I might have missed it, but what, what type of paper are you using? Say again. Well, I might have missed it. You might have told us already, but what's that, the paper you're working on there? What? The paper? Yes. Oh, this is, um, it's actually Bocking Is it Ruffle? Yeah, I think it's mocking for from the forty pound rough, which gives it a little bit of. See, I put a that bit's got too much water in. 
So the reason I put it like that is I might pull it up. Now, what I'm saying, Keith, is is that is that watercolour paper? Is that, what is it? Acrylic? Yeah, watercolour paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, heavy duty, 140 pound wash will take an awful lot of hammer. Yeah, yeah. Wait, if yeah. you try doing this on ordinary cartridge paper, it would just soggy to bits. Yeah. There we go, lots of trees in the distance. Right, how long have we been going? Quarter to 12. I must remember to have a tea break today. Right, so we've got those trees. I'm going to put some more brighter stuff in there. I'll use a bit of the green and a bit of the blue. And put some darker bits. Get a little bit of space between that clump of trees and that clump of trees. I want that to be very feathery around the other end. I'll put an indication of a trunk in there later, but at the moment I'm just going to get a mass. Now here, I've decided, well, I put that white bit there to give some indication that the light's coming from that direction. So, into my tree mess, I've put some yellow ochre and I'm just going to on hard. Lighten up some of that yellow ochre. Just to give a little bit of counter change. Once you get the counter change between a light and a dark, you get it singing. It really makes it stand out a bit here and there. Then. What's that, yellow ochre? That's yellow ochre, almost. Well, just a touch of white to it. Um, it's just where the light's catching. The light's coming from over here, so it's catching that side. All this and underneath will be dark. I'll put some twiggy things in later. But that's just so as I know. I'm in the big tree. I'm just adding a little bit of white to that bluey thing and I'm going to drag some it's not working it's drying even quicker than it should be. I'm just putting almost clear white into that on top of it very gently just to give a bit of shape to it okay right now um them using my system three what is it three quarter inch flat I'm going to make a much thinner dark I'll make it on there I'll use the paint's grey the ultramarine and I'll put some of the red in use the light red and there I've got this dark shadowy colour and all I'm going to do with that is just and I need it a bit wetter than that I'm going to put some underneath up there 
And I'm going to pull. This is going to be too dark, but I just want it to show <clears throat> where the man goes. Still feathering darks underneath those trees while I've got it on the brush. But remember, it's like acrylic. You can just go over it, go over it, go over it. As long as you don't press too hard. Okay, so now we've got... See how that's already divided it into two bits? You've got a bit over there. You've got something stopping it. I'll put a bush on this side just to tidy things up and now we've got that distant fieldy thing I'm going to get a smaller flat and in that there just to add a little bit of distance I'm mixing up a very 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 cold pale blue which is almost all white touch blue. Um, that wasn't just a touch of blue, that was a huge great dollop of blue. <laughs> and there, that should be a fairly cold blue, just put some grey in to kill it a little bit. I want this fairly thin, so I've dampened the brush again. You can do this with oils just as well by using um, oil instead of water and then all that mixing just for one brush stroke but that is the distant field. Put some of that right colour. See how that, that is exactly the same colour as that. But if I put it on the white, it's dark. If I put it on the dark, it's light. So there we go, we've got that. And I'm just going to put some almost pure white, mix white just into the edge of that, so as I get a little tiny bit of blue on it, and again just pull it across. went too far then. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm ruining it. I've got me darks going, you like going up too high. There we go. I've just saved myself from getting into real trouble because I'm not wearing my apron and I very nearly wiped this brush on my jeans but I thought better of it just in time. <laughs> I did that with an oil painting the other night and had to sneak down and rub small fever into the jeans and stick them in the dishwasher. In the dishwasher? In the washing machine. There, there we go. We've got a snowy field. And there's no actual white in that. But it still looks like snow. I think, anyway. If you don't think, go and watch somebody else. Um... 
Right. Okay. Now, five to twelve. I think we'll have a little tea break, and you can all have a natter. I'll go make yourself a cup of tea. I'll leave the meeting on, and everyone can just go and have a chat or have a tea cup break, of Alan. Whatever. Okay. Tea break. Tea break. Okay, I'll put that on. I'm going to put the kettle on. <laughs> it won't suit you. Bob, Bob. <laughs> won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> More to the point. Hey, that's a line from that play we were together. That's what? That, that was a line from that play we were in together. I'll put the kettle on and you oh, said... Yeah. It's, uh, what you call it, isn't it? It's in... Um, Happy Families was... Yeah. 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 Oh, that was one of the happy times we were married, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Underwood's dad. Yeah. He's nearly the same age as me now. It's really weird. Anyway, Mal, haven't seen you for ages. How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Yeah. Still doing loads and loads of photography. Um, not as much now. Um, what I've done is I've gone to Chester Uni. Yeah. And I'm doing fine art. Oh, are you? you yeah. You're going to do that. How's yeah. that working out with lockdown? Uh, quite difficult, to be honest with you, um, because we have to. Um, we have to do, um, you know, from video, and yeah. so we have live lectures, like similar to this now. Yeah. And then we only sort of go in once, twice a week, depending on what we're doing. Oh, that's so it's got quite yeah. So it it, suit it, me it, down to ground. It's not like I expected it. Yeah. I like to be in a, a live group. You know, I like to interact face to face yeah. and stuff like that. Really. So I found it a bit difficult. It's, um, yeah, I must admit, um, my stepdaughter, Emma, is, um, she's doing a PhD, but as part of that, she has to teach part-time. And um, she's in, this is in Manchester. Yeah. And at one time, a couple of weeks ago, when it was really just starting off in Manchester, they were insisting that she had to go in and do lectures even though they knew there was about 300 cases of COVID on campus. Oh, yeah. And she, well, the union got involved and uh, it all got stopped and she's been doing it by video ever since. Yeah. Um, which is just as well because she's, she's Verity's mum and it was just, it would be just awful when it comes to bears. Um, but it's very lonely for us for a simple reason especially me because um with me copd i don't go anywhere yeah and um every doctor or nurse or anything i've spoken to have all said exactly the same thing that with my chest and my circulation problems and blah 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 um it's just not worth going anywhere near it yeah. because the chances are I'd be clogging up a bed within a week, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So it's um, it's a bit well, it's not I'm quite enjoying it really because we can still go out with the dogs and uh, wander about in the sunshine or the rain or whatever. Yeah, as long as you can take and, the dogs uh, out. Yeah. I mean, if that's all I do now, I do this. I take the dogs out mm. and I paint. There's, 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 and, uh, oh, there I am. On my screen, I've got four. Hello, oh, Lizzie, next down. down. Oh. Keith, have you done gouache on canvas? Have I what? Done gouache on canvas. Yes, it works beautifully on canvas. Yeah. Um, it works, it's almost the same because you've got this. Yeah. Because you've got the grain in the paper here. You've got... Um, the weave of the canvas and you can actually get better dry brush strokes on canvas, canvas. So have you have you fixed it at all? No, 
it, that's just as it is because technically Lash is just water contained with more filler and more more filler and less gum arabic which makes it stiffer and it's more heavily pigmented as well so that the color stays there which is why it's the one paint where i say you need to shell out the extra and get the good stuff because that way you've got lots of good quality pigment whereas if you use the cheap stuff you've got lots of cheap nasty pigment and it just will not mix the same but as I said to, can't remember who, I said to somebody last week, you don't need to buy, you know, a pack of 24 gouache colours. You just need two blues, two reds, two yellows, uh, white, and a couple of earth colours, say the umbers or burnt umber and burnt sienna. Mm. as well as your two yellow and all the rest of it. So you've got six, seven, nine colours is the most you need to get. It seems to be six of it. It's less than 50 quid and it will last you for years if you get good ones. Um, unless, Lizzie, you decide to give all your paints away to somebody else, which <laughs> I know a certain person who did that. <laughs> Hey Keith, if you're going into oils, I, I've got no oils because I gave them all away. <laughs> no, I know it's really rotten that I might lend you some if you like. <laughs> Anybody got any idea who Lizzie gave all their oils to? <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got loads and loads of oil paintings. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm in the middle of two at the moment. That's the thing with oil. And that's the thing with me with oil. I tend to, to do it properly. You've got to let it dry. And then, um, and then go over it again. Whereas with this gouache, you let it dry and go over it. It only takes two minutes to dry. But with oil, yeah. it takes a fortnight to dry. Remember those oh, oils we did in Twig and they, couldn't get the, <laughs> yeah. the oils? We so yeah. The consequence of that is I've got about half a dozen oil paintings I've started. They're left for about to dry and then I can't be asked going back to it. Yeah. Well, the, do you remember those in Twig that we couldn't get to dry? I think oh, it was God, about two yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was. It must have been the atmosphere. But then there's a, a certain <laughs> bunch of <coughs> pedantic scientists who insist that oil paint can never dry, that it's always a liquid. Oh, these were always tacky. It, they were all... um, it oxidizes. <coughs> um, they reckon it's like glass, they reckon glass is always a liquid. It's not, a, but I mean, it's dry enough. Okay. That one's good. Okay, for abstract then, what would you say oil is the best paint to use? For abstracts, yeah. um, I, the best, for abstracts, I would say the best is acrylic, but if you use um, a retarder with it, yeah, so that you can move it around for longer. Yeah. But the good thing with, with acrylics is... Well, I find with abstracts, because I have great difficulty with abstracts, <laughs> I always feel pretentious. I've told you that before. Yeah. Um, but with me, you should just go over it. If, if it gets wrong, you just yeah. don't. Try a bit of yellow there, splodge. Oh, no, I don't like the yellow. I'll go over it with red. Um, it never shows through. Right. So, um, and you end up with canvases half an inch thick. It's really yeah. difficult, you yeah. know. Um, but that's what I would use for, a, for what's it. But then on the other hand, if you want it gentle in tone, you can smear it about, you know. So Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that, the smear we've got to do. Yeah. You know, and um, it's, it's basically it's lines. You've got to be, you know, it's, it's all lines and it's looking quite abstract. The one I've done is looking quite abstract. But now we're saying we've got to take a piece of that and we got to make it colour, 
you know, make it into colour. And I looked at it and thought, well, it looks very abstract, a piece of this, you know. Yeah. I, we drew the whole thing, which was, you know, A2, I mean, but he wants us now to take a piece of this. And it looks, I couldn't make it into anything but abstract the way I've done oh, it. That's fine. Um, looks like I've had an argument with the paper. Give it a go with acrylic. You've got some, so give yeah. it a go with that. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, well, the thing is, if you use oils to do the same thing, you'll end up with two completely different pictures anyway. They won't look anything like each other. Right. So, you know, I mean, I painted this picture half a dozen times, and you'd never know looking at the pictures. The only thing that will be in remotely the same is that they'll both have a tree growing up there, you know. But still, anyway, talking of which, I shall get back to work. Okay. Keith? Yeah? On everybody's picture, I can see all their room, but on mine, there's two black curtains. What is it? <laughs> oh, I think it's just narrow. <laughs> can you what, see two these two, two oh, black... Oh, side? Yeah, black yeah. partitions on the side. What is it? Um, oh. well, no, that's because it's... Um, are you using your phone? No, my iPad. There should be. Hang on, if we go on that. I think it's only um, when you're talking. There's, there is a way, but I don't know how, <laughs> of getting rid of those. No. It has to be done on your thing. Um, on email, email Jack or Jazz and see what they, if they can tell you how to do it. Yeah, but they're not here. <laughs> No, I know email them or text them or whatever. Um, I've no idea. Anybody know how Liz can get rid of her black lights down the side? It's on phone. No, my, my technician isn't it's here not. either. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your hands on the side and pull it. Oh, yeah. I, when he comes home, I go, right, how, how, do, why did this go Leslie. wrong? Why does that go wrong? I've tried. Oh, you've all gone. Oh, there you are. Please, oh. put it on. Oh, I'm not touching anything. Okay. Leslie, what are you trying to say, darling? She, she needs to put it on full <laughs> screen. Oh, there you go. Try it on full screen, Liz. It's in the top right-hand corner. It's It's got more and participants. No, that's at the no. bottom. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it's different on everybody's. Mine's on the bottom. It's like a little square, but it's... it's um, I got to get, it's like a union chat. Mine on my computer on my laptop here. It's a little square, but it's broken up square. And if you press that, you go onto full screen. Yes, yeah, that's it. I'm my frightened to I'm frightened to press anything in case you all go. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, <laughs> I need uh, it. Can you see four arrows pointing in different directions on the top right? Then that's the one. Press that. No. <laughs> Next okay, okay. View, where you've got speaker view, there should be a little square um, <clears throat> with these four arrows, and that's the one you need to press. No, it's got switch camera. No. 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 Never mind. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sorry, I sorry to jump in, Elizabeth. Have you got your iPad in portrait of or uh, landscape? Landscape. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's. It's in portrait, looking at me. Turn it, turn it, turn it landscape. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Alan. Take some on. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, there we um, go. Fancy that, eh? That, that was difficult. <laughs> I thought if I did that, you'd all be on your sides. <laughs> what, you mean like this? <laughs> Okay, right, I'll carry on with this. Brilliant. <laughs> right, there we go. Uh, this is this is why our tax pounds weren't wasted with Alan doing his 20 years in the RAF. He saved, just justified that with his astute intelligence and problem solving. There we go. <laughs> right, okay, off we go. Um, my paints have got a little bit stuck up, so... The good thing about gouache, or one of the good things about gouache, is if they start drying up, 
I'm not going to squirt mm. you, Ray, because you'll just run all over the place again. If you give them a squirt, they're like watercolors, they'll come back. So, okay. Where is a thinny brushy? There we go. No I won't. You know, I bought there they are. I bought three of these, one to use for watercolour, one to use for oil, and one to use for um acrylics. And I can never find any of them. Right, okay. Water. Damp me brush. And I'm going to do this tree here. Remember the light's coming from that side. So I'm going to use yellow ochre, a bit of white. I want it to stand out. I'm going to put a tiny touch of the burnt sienna in it. Right, right, <laughs> and there we go. I, this isn't a very expensive brush, but it comes to a brilliant point. It's SAA. I always... Oh, the other thing on the... SAA behind Right, okay. Yeah, he wants help, I'll put the big... The heater tree. delivered. The thing that you want, he'll have to put on the wall. I can oh. only see you, Keith, not your board. <laughs> so you're on the other one. Now try, try doing swap camera. <laughs> God. Oh, whoops. What are we going to do? Do what? What are we going to do? Try go to, you said you had swap camera. Try doing that. Yeah. I can't see swap camera anywhere. Oh, gosh. Under view options. Touch, it, touch your screen and it's on the top left. No, it's just got leave there. Oh, oh, There's hang on. Underneath leave. Underneath Don't leave. leave. <laughs> Don't I'm press pressing leave. which camera and it's doing nothing. Oh, no, it's doing, it's swapping your camera. Oh. Uh, oh, hang on. I did, because I had that. I had to get rid of it. I don't know, Lizzie. Nowhere. Before. Oh, now I can only see me. Oh, God. <laughs> I turn it the other way up again. I can only see me now. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh I can. No. Oh, you carry on. I'll, I'll keep playing around till I get you. It's gone back to portrait. It's gone back to portrait now. I did that, but I can't remember how I got it. But got his pictures back. I don't know what we're taking pictures of, Liz. But it's oh, there we go. Back to you again. Liz, can you hear me? Yeah. If you touch the screen up in the top left-hand corner, I think yeah. you should have something that says "Switch to Screen Share" or something like that. Oh, there we go. Screen. If you, if you touch the image, in fact, I'll, I'll do it with you now. So I'm touching me, so I can only see me now. Yeah, I can only see me. And then it says in the top left-hand corner, switch to screen share. Can you see that? Oh, hang on. Yeah. Touch that. Oh, got it. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm awfully sorry, everybody. <laughs> oh, no, that's brilliant. Everybody's going, oh. Bloody Liz, when well, they're all writing it down. Thank, can, so thank they... you, Alan. Right, okay. All I'm doing is this tree. In fact, there's several of them. Light colour. That yellow ochre with white. Yellow ochre with white and a touch of the... Um, I'm putting a bit more of it in now, the raw sienna. Burnt sienna. And I'm just flicking in some tree trunks. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. But these rigger brushes are brilliant. They keep points and they do all sorts. Right, now I've got light bits in. I'm going to use the blacky colour, Haynes Grey. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of the brown colour. And there I've got a very dark browny brown there. And just on the side where the light's not coming from, doesn't matter if you miss because you have black branches and light branches. So there we've got these trees. See how because there's a lot of contrast between the dark and the light, they really jump out. Yeah. So now at the base of them, I'm going to use the burnt sienna, mix it in with that dark colour, put a little bit of white in bits of it. Then I'm using the same brush, but instead of using the point, I'm going to lay the edge of it. Whoops, not enough white, and it's too wet. Is it a sable rigger? It's a pretend sable rigger. Okay. It says on it, imitation sable. And, and made, what is that? It's made out of nylon, but it works like sable. I've had it 12 months. I've had all three of them 12 months now. What number is it? It's a number, that's a number four rigger. Okay. But you can get number threes, twos. They they start off with zero, being very um, Fine. very thin, <laughs> and end up with number four. I think once you get past four, they start being rounds instead of riggers. Makes sense to me because I've bought lots of brushes over the past hundred and twenty years. So what that's supposed to look like is sort of brushy stuff around the bottom of it. And I'm going to go back to the point. I had a rag somewhere. Uh, flick, flick. That's one way of getting rid of it. Get some darky colour into that lighty colour that I made before and do some more at the base. <coughs> right, now what I'm going to do yeah I'm just going to put a line so I can remember what I'm going to be doing. Because instead of having the river coming round big, I'm going to put a bank there. I'll put some snow back on that after. And I don't want a very high bank. Because, where's that three quarters there? I'll have to disappear and found a rag. That one will do. Dry that off. 
now we're going to get sort of sky colour or something similar to sky colour. There. Now, because this is supposed to be looking like water in the river or the pond or whatever it is now, and because it lies down flat, I'm doing a flat brush stroke. Who's one of your favourite painters, Keith? Say again. Who's one of your favourite painters? Who do you? My favourite, my very favourite, is Pissarro. Oh, okay. I love all the impressionists. Yeah. Um, but Pissarro's my favourite of them. Right. Um, I like both Maris Mariso, Mo 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 Mariso when I'm in. Sentimental mood, should we say? But really, when it comes to landscapes, he does so much with yeah. the odd brushstroke. But also, and more modern, Robert Wood, who was an American impressionist, but who's actually English. Well, I won't hold that against him, but he emigrated to. America when he was young and he was amazing. Look for Robert Wood's paintings on Robert Wood or Will. On yeah. Google. And, oh, when I was a kid, um, he was in the set. Well, in the sixties, really, he was very famous then in America, and he was a bit like um, the sixties and seventies equivalent of Bob Ross because. He did oh. lots of how-to books. They weren't videos back then. But um, he did lots of books, how Robert Wood paints seascapes and how Robert Wood paints landscapes. And I got one from Smith's. I think it was half a crown or three and six at the most. And, oh, it was wonderful. I did that book to death. That's what I really learned oil painting from. Right. And then somehow or other, I it just went the way of all things. And I saw it on eBay. eBay? <laughs> eBay. Yeah. Um, and thought I'll replace that. Do you know what I had to pay for it? 25 quid. Yeah, expensive, yeah. Um, yeah, hang about. Paint amongst yourselves for a second. Ah! Okay. <laughs> That's what comes of moving. Oh, what the fuck? Oh. Get back where you will put you. There, that'll do. There you go. That's my book, Robert Wood. All right, yeah. Oh. And it's only that big, but it's absolutely fantastic. If anyone's got 25, 30 quid, you can get the hardback for about 120. Ooh. Um, but there you go, that's basically exactly the same book that I learned to paint from in my teens and early 20s. Right. So there you go, it's wonderful. I I'll love it. Yeah, I'll make a note of that. Because we're doing modernism. Oh yeah, he's one of the best. Yeah, we're, we're covering that. Yeah. Modern, um, modern impressionists. And he's a bit out of favour now. People don't really 
follow him as much as they used to. But it's one of those things when I talk in um, chat rooms. Hey. Yeah. Is there an ISBN number? Say again. Is there an ISBN number on the back? Ooh, I don't know whether it's. This is quite an old copy. No, it before they started doing them. Okay. Took me an hour to price, get up. Look at the price on the front. Oh, yeah. No, I just shut oh, it down. It. We started. One dollar. <laughs> I paid whatever a dollar was in this country. He hasn't so said. Half a dollar was half five options, it wasn't it? So. I, maybe I paid ten shillings for. Oh, because they I love. I'd rather have pastrami and cheese and Pardon? pastrami. Oh, I'll make my own. It's complicated. I said if you didn't have your sandwiches, you right? Okay. Um, enough reminiscences. Do 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 do. Right. The reason I put that in, I'm going to put some bread and well, that's actually. Raw sienna with a touch of the blacky colour. And I'm going to put that. Oh. Under the bank. The shadowy bits in the water. Don't worry about that thick black line because I am now going to use some white, mix it up with a little bit of the cobalt blue, get it nice and thick, and. Sorry, what was with the raw sienna? Added. What was with the raw sienna? Uh, Payne's grey or black if you have okay. Payne's grey. There you go. My wife's favourite music song from one of her favourite musicals. Snow, snow, snow. That you know that one, Liz, and can sing it. What? <laughs> no, it's from... Uh, what's it from? It's either White Christmas or the other one. Don't know it. Good grief. You obviously don't live in our house when it comes to December. It's never off the fucking <laughs> telly. Oh, Kerry, my daughter's just as bad. Right, there we go. We've got some snow along the river bank. And... Oh, that was effective. Put some bits of light on it. Because that bit's sloping that way, put it down there. Now, where's me rigger again? Get the same sort of colour as those. Somebody's phone's ringing. Uh, oh, it's ours. Yes. So now we've got some little reflection-y things. I'll put some really dark just under that band. I don't want it to be straight because the, well, be straight at the bottom of the top will have sort of hangovers. And over here, we'll make a sort of 
greeny browny colour. Greeny browny. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm still painting. I'm fine. <laughs> is that Mike? Yeah, it is Mike. Come on. Oh, hello, Mike. <laughs> hello. I'm just backing her up with all this. This <laughs> your Jackie. Oh. You just come on. There's no lunch for it. <laughs> Mine's got the same problem. Oh. <laughs> Having to make some himself. Uh, well, right now. Can everybody else see each other? Because I can. Do, I just see Keith and the, the odd person pop up. But does everybody else see? Got a full yeah. screen? Yeah. You've got it? is yeah. the top of your ladder where you've got the picture of me. Yeah. There I've should be a little arrow or something. Oh, uh, and and then you've uh, got a rectangle on its own, and you've got. A rectangle with another rectangle on top of it and if yeah. you do press the two rectangles it should come into a ladder with people uh, well what I'll, I'll have to practice that because i can't see any symbols on Ma that have on you got to put a minus in a little rectangle around you sorry <laughs> on mine you've got a little round rectangle around you and then there's plus or minus in the corners. And if you press plus, everybody else comes up. Oh, gosh. It. It, well, it's quite right. difficult to see you in that. It's tiny for me to see you. I can't see any pluses or minuses, though. Oh. I'll give that. You know what? I'm just pleased to have done the Zoom, to be honest. So <laughs> I'll practice that for next time. Yeah. yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Ask Mike and he'll say, oh, it's dead easy, you do this. <laughs> and you'll go, oh, I feel silly now. <laughs> right, all I'm doing here, I gave up of trying to do posh reflections. I'm just pulling paint down into this thing to make it look almost as if oh, the man. colours oh. above are being reflected in the water. And then I'm going to do a cheat. My problem there with that water is that white is wobbly now. So, get me dark, dark. What did I do? Can't find my mild stick, I'll use a big brush instead. There we go, that's that now. I'm just on the Zoom uh, art thingy. Can I read you back? Thank you. Talking about seascapes um, with that, I'm, I've got to do a presentation on uh, St. Ives School. On what? St. Ives School. Oh gosh. You know, seascapes, you know, he's talking about seascapes. Yeah, um, I must admit, I don't know much about that. It's, um, uh, uh, Peter Lanyon, um, Patrick Heron. Yeah, I, 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 it's more, yeah, it's not really my see, my seeing that. You need to get on YouTube or look at them yeah fact, you can nick everything that you need off there and just cut it and paste it 
<laughs> they call that cheating, don't they? Or something like that. Plagiarism? Yeah, that's it. The snag is, kids used to do that when I was teaching, and eventually they've got programs now which can scan work that's put in and um, and see if there's echoes of it somewhere on the internet. Yeah. Most annoying. Because I remember when they first started doing it, when the internet was in its infancy, we had the devil of a job with several people whose parents, who should have known better, were computer literate who would get all this stuff down for them. Yeah. And you get essays handed in that you knew bloody well mm -hmm. that the kids who wrote them didn't have that vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. But you couldn't prove it. Right, yeah. so today. <clears throat> now, I'm not really over happy with that, but we'll see. I'll put some other stuff. See how it dries out. Right, okay, so... We've got that I need to put something in the front here because I don't like that. This is what happens of make it when you start making it up as you go along. If hey. I stuck to that picture, I mean look at the picture, it's all green grass there. Yeah. Bugger it, off you go. Hey. Who said that? Me, Leslie. Okay. I'm just <clears throat> looking at it. It looks fantastic to me, but I'm I'm just wondering whether the uh, the water line that you've painted in with the snow above it, it still have, should perhaps have a bit of that snow reflected in the water in the water. Um, it depends on the angle that you're looking at. The if there's an overhang of the back. Oh yeah. Mm. You only get the best stop, way stop to it. look at reflections in water and stuff like that is if you get a mirror and put something right near it and then move it further away, and you it's amazing how much or how little is actually shown in the reflection. But I can see from the angle we're looking at, and, and then it all depends on, light travels in a straight line, so how much reflection you see depends on where you're standing. See what I mean? Yeah. If you, but you're right, it, it's not so much that to me, it just looks as if it's a bit hard, so I am gonna put a little bit of snow. Because I'm working on the principle that I take mm -hmm. out. It's there, it's really hard, isn't it? Yeah, but I think that looks. <clears throat> Better. Yeah, that does look better. Thank you, me dear. I don't like to interfere. Pardon? I don't like to interfere. The whole point of this is so we can help each other and talk to each other and generally share ideas and things like that. The okay. day I stop learning about painting will be the day that I pop the clogs. I mean it. I'm not just saying that. Everybody who is any good never stops learning. Um, Lovely. And it's not just me that says that. It's everybody I know. 
when I was about 22, 23, I used to think I was the best painter that ever hit the world. <clears throat> I really did. I thought I was brilliant and I sold the odd picture and I did commissions for people, pictures of their houses. And if I look back at what I was doing then, I cringe. I was absolutely bloody awful. <laughs> and um, it really is. It's just awful. My mother had a picture of mine on the wall of her house over the fireplace that I did then. And I was so embarrassed looking at it years later. <clears throat> I didn't really notice until we came back from Newport. Um, then I, I went to live with my mum then. Um, while we were trying to buy a house. And, oh, I was so embarrassed. I was saying to her, Mum, do you, do you need to keep that picture? Can we just take it down? <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Oh, awful. Anyway. I'm laughing because, you know, I only started in February, so I've actually got my paintings going up the wall and they hopefully progress from absolutely awful to a little bit better. <laughs> That's the main thing um, that you need to do. I always say people to do that is if you do something every week and put it in a drawer <clears throat> in order, just don't look at it, just put it in a drawer and... Um, and then after six months, take the pile out and look at them and you'd be absolutely amazed how much you improve. Right, that's a bit dark there. I want to have that as a sort of shadow and it's just... Uh... Oh. Oh. Is that mine? Not mine. Oh, is it? Not? Mine, actually. <laughs> mine makes that sort of noise as well. Um, I'm going to put a tree on this side. I was going to put light coloured sky to it. I think. No, I'm not. I am going to put light coloured sky. I'll change the weather. Is basically white with a tiny touch of yellow ochre to it to give it a creamy colour. And I'm doing it very dry, just dumbling it over. And what I want is something to balance that light and that dark. So There we go. Instead of having a tree, I'm going to have a bunch of things come in here. And blue. And a bit of orca. And I'll put a bit of the lemon in it and I'll make it a holly bush or something like that. I don't want it very big. <clears throat> the reason I want something here <clears throat> is to cast a shadow down there. Right, now in the heart of that, it needs to be dark, so ultramarine, black, red.
janky these sorts of shapes. What I'm doing is I'm using this three quarter inch brush and I'm just tapping the end of it. Make this sort of <clears throat> janky these shapes thing. Oh, I know what I'll do. Mixing lemon yellow with the olive green. I want a much brighter colour. Now I'm going to get boing, a very old mank up bristle brush. Bash it in those colours. I did mention to Andy about the washing machine. I mentioned the washing machine. You have to. Yeah. <clears throat> there, that looks a bit better. Huh? Put some light covers in it. You didn't need this. Right. The sort of a bush that's growing there are a clump of bushes and that gives me a good reason to that small bristly brush mix up some blue touch of the Umber, not umber, we'll see, burnt sienna. And I've got a nice dark there. Uh, looks. I've got too much light coming in onto there for you to see properly. But because of, um, of there, we've got light coming that way, so I can put a nice dark shadow underneath there. That's being cast down the hill. Mm -hmm. Which helps us to see that is a hill. Right, okay, because it's I've got the shadow, clean the brush. It's on a white colour with bit. What I'm using for my white is this sort of thing, which is the white with other stuff mixed into it so that it's not bright white. Debs took her out for a meal on Tuesday. Sorry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Took her for a meal on Tuesday. Yeah. That's Finney Bridge. So I said, oh, she sat down. So it was really nice. I said, oh, good, good. You enjoyed it? She said, yeah, yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. I said, what did you have? She went, oh, um, what, meat, vegetable, fruit? <laughs> oh. Right, now then. Yeah. Right. Um, it's getting to be nearly one o'clock, so I'm going to just we'll quit finish it. I think we spent too much time naturally waiting for the <laughs> week. So, snow back there. Pretty open after that. <laughs> How did you get on at the hospital? Yeah, they've taken the lump off. So they've taken the lump off, taken all the bad off. Yeah. And Creed it up and put it back. Right, okay. Um, just put some 
I'm rushing now. Just put some contrast in here. Put some shadows under there. There you go. Digital art. <laughs> I love that line. It's not mine. I nicked it from Charles Evans. <laughs> Probably nicked it from somebody else. Oh, Mal. Talking about abstracts. Yeah. Have a word with Jackie. She does the most marvellous abstract Yeah. And she's there, yeah, swap numbers so you can talk to each other. Um, <laughs> what, me, Jackie? <laughs> yeah, you, Jackie, you do wonderful abstracts. You know I love <laughs> Yeah, because I can't see properly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's part of the way to do it. In fact, when you're doing anything like this, if you want to get the tones right, what I do is quite simply that. Now all I can see is darks and lights. And I've still got better vision then than Jackie has, but she's looking <laughs> blind. So oh Jackie, mm -hmm. was it you who took what's his name's Biden's laptop off him? Because he was registered blind as well, even though he recognized Hunter Biden. <laughs> In America, the big scandalous thing, which isn't. Oh really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's probably Trump who did that. <laughs> but what I'm doing now is I'm just adding contrast, putting darks against the lights, and I'm going to darken up some of the shadows here and there. Um, Perfect. Lovely. If anyone thinks I'm being horrible to Jackie, I'm not. We've had this discussion lots of times <laughs> and we worked out that if we joined together, we'd make a proper person because I'd be able to <laughs> see and she'd be able to hear. No, that's not true. He's being horrible to me. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> no, I said it's not true that you are being horrible to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can be horrible back then, darling. I don't mind. No, no, I'm only joking. Oh, I, I know you. <laughs> so much. It really is lovely to see you again. Oh, it's nice to hear that, everybody's voices. That's the thing I'm going to miss about not going back to Twig is the, is the people. But never mind. We shall do this a lot when lockdown's over be able to um, start meeting in various places yeah keep an eye on your communal space fabs and let us know when it's available yeah. i have no idea it's been locked down because people oh were... yeah i realized that but yeah. i mean it yeah it definitely will yeah. I keep an eye on council websites and things as soon as we can. Yeah. Liz and I are going to start, and Syl, when she's sorted out her moving, we're going to start organising a couple of workshops again. Yeah. Um, they will New be in shop because I would have to pay. Um, that's one of the things I fell out of as they reckon all workshops have to... Ugh, it's an earthquake! Um, they reckon all workshops have to bring in £10 an hour. And I just think that's bollocks. Mm. It's a charity for God's sake. Do you know Newcastle, Keith? Say again. Newcast, the North yeah, Wales uh, carers, they've asked me to do some teaching when the virus is over. Oh, cheeky buggers, they asked me to do some before. <laughs> I never got round, well, it never came to anything. 
But yes, that's brilliant. They, I, can uh, I can always put your name to them. You know, yeah, I mean, I, the problem was I did one thing with them when we were doing Twig at T-Pow, and um, it was a girl called Helen, and she stopped being in the Wrexham place. And she went somewhere else. So because it all changed, it all fell apart. And then the virus struck. Yeah. Um, it's all very rotten, isn't it? Okay, now out there, I'm going to put some. dark and light twiggy bits <clears throat> mainly dark I think so as it will show Payne's grey <clears throat> Vienna nice darky colour darkish colour I don't want to get arrested Keith, does it lose some of its vibrancy as it dries the gouache? It tends to, yeah, it does. But part of that is because I've got more light on it than I should have. Oh no, that hasn't. Yes, it does. It tends to. Dulls down a bit. Yeah, it does. It dies not so much lighter, but duller than when it's wet. So it's one of the things you have to be careful about when you're using it. Like with watercolour, you have to always be aware that um, it dries about 50% lighter. With gouache, it not so much lighter, but less bright. So you need to make your contrasts a bit more than you would using oils. So do you find that it needs to be... Go, do you tend to try and find that you go from light to darks or dark to lights with gouache? That's the good thing about it. You don't. It doesn't matter which way you go. But what you need to do is when you get to this stage, is you need to make sure you've got some really good contrasts yeah. and really bright colour. But one of the things I love about it is the fact that you can do light over dark or dark over light or any which way you want. Same as you can with oil or acrylic, but it doesn't. Acrylic to me always looks a bit plasticky, but that's probably the way I use it. Um, but what I tend to do when I'm using gouache is I know if we say that that's a holly bush. Or whatever, put some and they will it's difficult to see when you're here. What I'll do um is like I usually do, I'll um I'll take a proper picture of it when I've got the lights different and it will look a bit more like it really does. To me, the difference between that and what I can see on my screen is this is much, much more contrasting. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll take a proper picture of it and show you what it really looks like when I've finished. Um, right, so just want to put some light Three trunks going on there. Yeah, it was. I was getting a lot of glow. Mm. Stand with your back to one. Sit with your back to one. No, oh, sat here now. There we go. We've got a few lighter trunks going in with the what's it? Some under there. And what I the only thing I want to do very.
Okay. Edge to the water there. And get this brush again. And this is my finishing touch. Yeah, just dump the brush in the palette. I'm going to get some pure white from the bottom of the thing. And just drag a couple of ripples. Hopefully that might make it look a bit more watery. Definitely. So there, I'm going to leave it now because it's one o'clock and I should have finished by now anyway. It's gone well. So there we go. Um, it's finished doing that. And as I say, I'll do a proper picture of it afterwards. So as you can see the real contrast, there's things I'm not happy about. On I'll do it now. That is a bit harsh. Mm. That line there. Just don't want to break it up a little bit. This brush, by the way, that I'm using now. Um, I it part of a three brush set that I got from uh, from the range, and uh, I thought it was rubbish. It went like this straight away, but it's absolutely brilliant for stippling with. It's not supposed to be a stippling brush. You see how that's standing out now because it's. It's a bigger contrast, so you've got to put the contrast in. Right, there we go. Dark one over there, and I'm going to stop fiddling. Okay. Um, How many of you lot, I know, Carl, you don't use Facebook very much. I was just wondering about starting a Facebook or a WhatsApp group or something like that so we could chat to each other when we're not doing this. Have a think about it and email me. Mm, okay. I'll send out an email. What about I, Messenger? What about I don't do, I don't messenger. do messenger. Facebook, but I'm on WhatsApp. I'm on Messenger. I'm on That's WhatsApp. Part of Facebook is Messenger. Yeah, this is that. Uh, oh, some yeah, people but other like other Facebook. people can't see it though. No, but other people can't use it either if they're not using Facebook. Yeah. No. It's, God, it's uh, let tell you what I'll do. I'll have a think about it, and you can all have a think about it about mm. what you've got and what you think is intrusive and what you think is not intrusive. And we'll see if we can get something together on one of the platforms. Yeah. If it's whatever, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we can get. Um, Do a WhatsApp group, that's fine. Yeah, WhatsApp group is good. Yeah, I, I use WhatsApp a lot and it's free and it's... Um, Easy. And, and you can send your pictures, post your pictures yeah. on there as well. Pictures you can natter. But I say I I use that a lot, WhatsApp, to, to share pictures and chat. I mean, Caroline and I, even the only... most of the time here, and she's downstairs, we WhatsApp each other times a night. The only possible downside there is the likes of my hubby who's got an old phone. WhatsApp isn't um, supported. On people with old um, pan. I was going to say what we can do with that is just see who can download it and who can't. Um, yeah. Right, I'm going to knock that on the head because I'm spoiling it now. But there we go. We started off with a nice summary picture and we've ended up with this 
<laughs> wintry, more Definitely. wintry thing. Um, and we've had a good old natter, which is the main thing. Um, yes, been lovely. And that's that's good. It's nice to see so many people here today, people I haven't seen for ages. But remember, gouache, keep your contrast in the final layers. And then it's it works. The other thing you can do Al, is um, once it's done, you can't you can't leave gouache like that. You've got to put it behind glass. But if you put a thin layer of polyurethane varnish, proper varnish, not just PVA, over it, it will bring back some of the contrast. All right. okay. So you can always do that as well. Okay what? then folks, I am what? gonna go. What was that you used as varnish, sorry? Just ordinary clear varnish, polyurethane varnish. Not PVA. Not PVA because PVA mm. will dry a bit more milky and that's part of the problem with this. But if you, you can get, get clear PVA now. Say again. You can get clear PVA. Yeah, I know you can, but it's still, with whatever. Mm. If it's just a glue, you can put PVA varnish, but if you just use glue, um, it will, it tends to take some of it. But if you put artist's polyurethane varnish, okay, yeah, then it will keep the contrast. 